Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push us in the future in strength, hope, and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to start this morning by telling you a story. It's a fairy tale of sorts that I made up, but I, I, think, it's worth sh I think it's worth sharing. Perhaps it will remind you of something. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful old ship. She was so old that she had outlived all those who originally built her. As a result, there were few people who remembered the builders' names, and even fewer who knew who owned her. The ship had seen many voyages, but she was well maintained. As a result, she still regularly set sail on one kind of journey or another. Now on this ship, there was plenty of room for passengers, and many came for a time to sit on her decks or stroll her passageways. Some came because they just loved to sail. These passengers rarely ventured far from the ship, and they never wanted to miss a voyage. Some came because they loved old ships. Some came because they were looking for something different. They needed a change of scenery and a sailing trip seemed like a good idea. Others came because they didn't know what else to do. They were feeling a little lost and they hoped a voyage would do them some good. Still others came on board because they knew some of the other passengers, and those passengers seemed to be having so much fun. On the day the old ship cast off its lines, hoisted anchor, and set sail on another voyage. There were plenty of passengers on board, and the weather was fine. Not long after they set sail, the captain gathered all the passengers on the main deck. He welcomed them all on board and thanked them for their willingness to come sailing. Then, to their astonishment, he told the passengers that this grand old ship belonged to all of them. It was their ship, and they could sail it as long as they wanted and as far as they wanted. He told the passengers that the length and daring of their voyage was completely up to them. They could set out across the world. They could go for a brief tour. They could drop anchor and hold their current position. Or they could even return to port. It was up to them because it was their ship. But if they were to travel any distance at all, then everyone would need to help. They would all need to learn how to sail, how to care for the old ship, how to make way, how to ride out the storms. Some of the passengers were excited and couldn't wait to get going. Some of the passengers were surprised. Yes, they wanted to go sailing, but they hadn't signed up for this. Confused, they turned and looked at the captain and the members of the crew and said, certainly, this is not our ship. Pointing to the captain and the crew, they said, you all own the ship. This can't be our ship, they protested. We didn't buy it. We only came for a voyage to try something new, to get a breath of fresh air, to find a change of scenery. No, it's your ship, the captain said again. There have been others who owned her before you, and there will be others who own her after you but now she's yours. Where she goes and what she does is up to you. Pointing to the other members of the crew, he continued, we are just here to help you steer and hoist the sails. We can teach you something about sailing and the rest we can figure out together. The question is, 
Do you want to lay claim to this fine old ship and point her into the wind? Or would you rather just head back to shore? Do you want to lay claim to this fine old ship and point her into the wind? Or would you rather head back to shore? There's always, almost always a little bit of truth in every fairy tale, and I think there is in this one as well. This fine old ship of a church is yours. It's yours. It isn't mine. At best, it's ours. If you consider yourself a member of this community, then you are one of those people who has inherited this place and all that it stands for, or fails to stand for, in the world. It will be nothing more and nothing less than you want it to be. God's Holy Spirit is ripe in this place. God promises the Spirit to all Christian communities. But it is up to us to unfurl the sails and turn into the breeze. The problem sometimes is that for whatever reason, not enough of us claim our inheritance. Not enough of us claim their ownership or even realize it. We think it belongs to someone else. We think others can provide for her voyages. Others can steer. Others can swab the decks or trim the sails. But the fact is, this church is a community for a reason. Because it is only together that we can actually be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. After all, that is our job. We are to be Christ to one another and to everyone within our reach. In our lessons for today, we hear about two widows who give all that they have to honor God. The widow of Zarephath has almost nothing, just enough oil and enough meal to cook up one last piece of fry bread. She knows that after this is gone, she and her son will shortly starve to death. But when Elijah commands her to give him some of her bread, she trusts God enough to take this risk. As a result, everyone gets something to eat, and there is enough left over to feed the woman and her son for many days. In our reading from Mark, we find another widow that Jesus praises for her generosity. Her two small coins in the temple treasury meant more than any of the others because she had so little but wanted so badly to be faithful. My friends, these two stories are not ultimately about giving food or giving money. They are about the trust that is involved in faith. They are about the trust these two widows had in God's love and God's grace. That's the real miracle. They trusted God enough to know that even if they gave more than was prudent, more than they should, indeed, in these cases, almost everything they had, God would not leave them desolate. As Jesus said to his disciples, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. Thank you for the faith, the trust that enables you to give to God's work on this old ship of St. James's. If you are one of those people who claim their inheritance of this place, then thank you for your help and your generosity. Thank you for trusting that we are and can be the body of Christ. And yet there is no reason in the world we should not be able to raise the money that we need to do the work that we do in a day or in a week. 
Between all of us, we have all the gifts we need and plenty to share. Forgive me for being so blunt, but why does it take until the middle of February to find the resources we need to sail our ship for another year? Maybe it's because we don't realize it's our ship and that it takes all of us to sail her. Maybe it's because we don't trust enough to believe that if we give from what we have, then God will do the rest. Now I know that I'm preaching to the proverbial choir this morning, so forgive me. There are a lot of people who aren't here that I would love to have hear this message. Thank you to everyone who has made a pledge to our life together. But the feast is over and the pledge cards have been mailed weeks ago. If you haven't made a pledge, please do. We cannot do any of this without you, without all of us. It isn't the amount that matters most. It's the expression of faith that happens when we give. Every gift makes a difference. Every gift matters when it comes to the ministries we offer, when it comes to the salaries we provide our staff, when it comes to the curriculum and materials for our children, when it comes to the agencies and the mission trips we support. Every gift matters because every gift is a statement of faith. Every gift is a thank you to God that says, I trust you, I'm doing my best to follow you, and I will do my part to keep this ship of faith sailing far over the horizon. Amen.